I followed this conversation for a while, so I decided to bring one of the two major documents that we're working with. You know, often we have this conversation in this country that, oh, we don't have a plan. We're just running around. We don't have a plan. We're just participating in what everybody's doing. But when you actually examine uh, what we are working with, there are two major instruments that I think can help us as a basis. And then we can rather have a conversation on whether or not these are good enough and there are parts that we have to tweak. I want to go back a little bit to deal with a few things up here before I respond to your specific question. The question after China, what next, I think is one of the last questions. One of the first questions for me is why China? Why China? If you look at the geopolitics of the world, you have the um, Americas, you have Europe, you have Africa, you have the Asians as well. And everybody is in this exercise of looking for resources to develop um, their own country and give their own people development. And if you look at where the world is today, China is at a point where, as was rightly said, they are looking for resources to boost their own economic development. They are looking primarily for minerals and other related resources to boost their own development. They are also looking for markets where they can also sell their finished goods. What is the opening in Europe like for China? Pretty limited. In the Americas, pretty limited. Even in Asia, and if you look at their own geopolitics in Asia, with their own cultural battles and their own nuances, even within themselves, Japanese, Chinese, etc., they have their limitations. Africa offers China a fertile market where A, they believe they can get their mineral resources that they are looking for, among other things, and B, they can also find a market to sell their finished goods. And in this case, you are noticing that particularly China is interested in selling infrastructure or EPCs to Africa. Flip the coin. Where are we in our agenda as a nation? And what are we looking for? We are at a point, and if you read the African Development Bank uh, studies, Africa alone has an infrastructure deficit of about 130 to 170 billion dollars a year. Ghana's estimates, which I personally believe are even a little low, talks about about $2 billion a year. We are looking for places where we can get mostly infrastructure coming in, in um, um, foreign direct investment, particularly in the area of industrialization, coming in. So again, look at the geopolitics of the world. What are your options? Europe, with the economic partnership agreements that they try to uh, promulgate and some debt instruments that they will be willing to sell to you. Of course, with all of the strings that come attached with it. Look at the Americas. What are your options there? The Bretton Woods institutions, uh, AGOA, um, uh, um, the compact where every five or ten years they'll throw some money at you and say, this one is for energy, this one is for that. Look at Africa itself, even as we try to open up and do more trade among ourselves. One of our biggest uh, partners, um, Nigeria, doesn't seem interested in that enterprise. So what are your options? You also now look at China where you're going to get a lot of EPCs coming, infrastructure coming, financing that is not necessarily coming at some of these terms that you see traditionally in other parts of the world. And they are also looking at your resources that are sitting here literally uh, untapped, undeveloped, while you are sitting on them unemployed, poor. So you can do business with the Chinese. It is a logical decision to do business with the Chinese. The question really is, what are the risks in doing business with the Chinese? And how do you mitigate those risks? Now, today in Ghana, we have what we call the Coordinated Program of Economic and Social Development Policies, 2017 to 2024. If you read the Constitution, Article 36.5, any government is required within the first two years to come up with a plan. Within the first year of this administration, we have come up with a plan, not just for the four years, but a plan which we hope can extend to the next um, seven years or eight years. This plan has clarity on a number of pillars that we need to achieve. You scan the global landscape and ask yourself, where can I find resources to fill this? I have a couple of slides that if I have um, a few minutes, I would want to uh, show on the screen. And those slides tell you quite clearly that if you look at what we need to do as a country, today, the average Ghanaian in this country believes that government should be doing maybe two or three times as much as it, is, uh, as it is doing now. Whether it's roads or infrastructure or healthcare or education or whatever. 
government should be doing about three times. That literally sounds like government should be spending about two and a half times its budget. I won't even say three if we are considering efficiency. If you look at how much domestic resource you can mobilize and you compare and you look at the gap, you have to find a place to get other resources. So you have two options. Are you going to go for debt? Or are you going to also go for some sort of partnership that you can leverage to get the resources to deliver what you are looking for? So here's the point. We have a program that we are running that has a number of pillars. And if you scan the global landscape, you will find out that China has answers to some of the questions that we are asking. China has products that we are looking for. We have products that they are looking for. The slide I have here shows between 2012 and 2017 our total revenue versus even what government has been able to spend, which we all believe is not enough, total expenditure. And I'm saying that even if you moved the expenditure curve, the blue curve, um, one and a half times higher, you still have a huge gap between the orange curve below and filling that gap. The gap in between is our annual financing. That's what translates into our deficit on a year-by-year -year basis. So why are you going to get the resources to move you from where today you are to that point where the optimal level of the Ghanaian will say, oh, our government is able to spend enough to do X or Y or Z. And that's where China comes in. China has an answer for you. And if I show you the second slide, in our coordinated program of economic and social um, development policies, there are over eight major things that we are looking for or we need resources to fill or to deliver. And in the limitations, you find arrangements in China that respond to these limitations or that respond to these questions that we are asking. So the question becomes, can you engage with China in a way, and then that's what will bring me to the second question of the pillars of our China strategy. Can you engage with China in a way that allows you to get these resources to answer your questions, mitigate your risks, um, among other things, not leave yourself in a position where you are at their beck and call every day. So, for example, we have an industrialization program or what we call an industrial transformation agenda in our program. China also, among other things in their FOCUC outlay, is offering an industrialization platform. So can we connect the two and tap into their resources? If today we say we're taxing everybody, if you look at the domestic resource curve, we're taxing everybody X extra to fulfill this program. What is the level of resistance we are going to face? First of all, is there the ability to even raise that kind of domestic resource here? And if you look at the curve, we are doing better in domestic resource mobilization, but it's still not enough. So is there the ability to raise that? Or can we tap into this resource of China and deliver that one? Agricultural modernization, which we are looking at currently, we are calling it an agriculture and rural development program. In the China model, they have an agri modernization exercise in which they are willing to offer machinery for some um, higher level or higher value chain agri products. We just signed one uh, under the auspices of the Universal Merchant Bank where they want the cassava that we have here processed into starch to feed Chinese factories. So can you tap into that and get the machinery here and do a bit of that and now process and export and get it there? You have, um, uh, I can't see too well with the light here. You have things in climate change. You have things that are uh, promoting infrastructure, for example, and trade, for example. So can you tap into those options? If you can, you will either go for it from Europe or America or maybe from Africa here, if the Chinese have access to it, then can you go for it in a way that mitigates your risk? So the first thing is that, yes, we have clarity on what we also require and where the resource allocations on the global geopolitical scene are. And China is a good place to get some of these things. Now, the second thing, therefore, is how do you engage? And that's the second point I come to. You, you or for us, we are clear that what we need to do is to engage on a level of partnership. Is to, among other things, also engage in a way where we leverage the resources we have. What use is it? So, for example, and the big conversation now is bauxite. We have close to, or we are told, we have close to about a billion metric tons of bauxite sitting here. I see um, uh, Professor Akela Kwasoya here. The old model that we use is that we'll give out a mineral grant to somebody who will mine this bauxite, um, pay us some royalties, some corporate income tax or some um, uh, uh, um, taxes on salaries that are paid. And at the end of the day, we won't see much value even out of that bauxite that we are mining. We've done it the same way with many of our resources in times past. Can we leverage some of these resources that we are sitting on while we are poor and unemployed in a transaction 
or through means that allow us to get resources out of that to meet some of these um, needs that we have. So first, you are looking for partnership. Second, you are looking for partnership in a manner that allows you to leverage your resources. Third, you are looking for ways of mitigating your risks. The literature tells us that, for example, if you do business with the Chinese, there are a number of risks. You may not get what they promise you. And we've seen it here in Ghana, you know, with the CDB facility, for example. You sign up to about three billion, you get one billion, the rest is lost in negotiations back and forth. Sometimes, even when you get it, there are those who argue, and if you look at the cases of Sierra Leone and Kenya, for example, you won't get value for money. And there's research and data that shows why sometimes African countries that have done business with China don't get value for money. Because they don't come with all of these strings on debt and financing and your books attached, you may end up putting yourself at debt distressing levels. So the big point here is how do you do business with the Chinese and mitigate all of these risks? That's the third part of our argument. And finally, how are you getting value for money? Not just in terms of dollar or CD terms, but even in terms of the quality of items that you have there. So for me, the question is, it's not about after China, what next exactly? Even though that is a relevant question, that becomes the last part we'll come to. The question is, why China? Can you do business with China? How do you mitigate your risks? What is your strategy as you do business with China? Because if you don't do business with China, you do with Europe, or you do with America, or you do with Africa, or you do with somebody else, or somebody else will still do business with the Chinese. And that is the framework within which um, I examine the question that you throw to us today. Of course, after China, or after a recent trip, we have a roadmap to ensure that it doesn't just end up as eight MOUs that don't materialize or partly materialize, but it delivers value at the end. And I'm sure later we can get into a bit of that one.